Hi friends, so in the first lecture of this week, we got an introduction to uh, human reliability and now I think we are getting uh, acquainted with the core terminologies, uh, what we mean by human model and why there is a need of improved human model. So for that it is required that you know we, we um, review uh, all the available uh, techniques or methodology in human reliability. Um, so there are uh, more than 20 uh, techn uh, techniques that are available, but we will discuss the one uh, which are more relevant to the safety critical system and probably the techniques that we will be discussing, uh, they are basically, uh, they have their origin in nuclear power plants or uh, in the area and uh, how they have evolved and some of them, they are still relevant and extensively used. So we will, uh, in short, if I have to tell, we will review two techniques uh, that is, uh, um, a, a, of course, an overview will, be the, the overview will be there for nine techniques, but then in, uh, in detail, we will discuss two of the uh, techniques um, that is in lecture three and four, that is THERP and uh, uh, human cognitive reliability. But this lecture is dedicated to uh, the selected nine techniques uh, that are available then that will give enough input for us to uh, our way forward uh, for us to have a uh, what we look forward to in improved model and how we can work on effectively reducing the estimates uh, uncertainty in the estimates of human reliability so this is uh, this lecture is de dedicated to uh, an overview of uh, human reliability methods Okay, so uh, if we look at just small uh, background in this in this area, the the human reliability technique in a systematic manner uh, was initiated in uh, in uh, for military application in uh, United States, uh, but later on it was adopted uh, in Wash 1400 and one Thurp study, uh, which is very uh, which is at the core of uh, human reliability in uh, nuclear plants and. Um, now this was this era was 1964 wash 1400 was launched in 1975 and in uh, around early 80s 83 or so uh, we had this uh, third technique a very very comprehensive uh, more than 600 pages handbook uh, which gives all the solution of course um, uh, even using the, that handbook also you require an uh, uh, expertise okay uh, so uh, and then need. Of course, uh, by this time in the second lecture, we have understood well uh, why uh, why uh, human reliability is required. Now, since we are moving from qualitative to quantitative era, uh, that is probabilistic risk assessment, where data and all are uh, enabling factor to achieve the objective of the studies. Uh, so, so the human factor also uh, form part of whether it is accident sequence analysis or whether it is a fault tree analysis. We have to have quantified estimates of human error and if we have initiating event then how recovery is possible, how uh, if human fails then the accident uh, is part of the accident sequence, uh, human uh, error itself becomes one of the component of the uh, uh, sequence actually. So, uh, so that that is how it is very uh, relevant and then um, um, we have this uh, um, active component actually in, uh, uh, the, uh, the available methodology that like in THERP they have used the word the human component. Human component means is it that we are drawing a parity with the hardware component to understand human behavior or, or is it a one of the component like uh, hardware and software component whatever is the meaning but then uh, we require more dedicated approach or more uh, in-depth model for human there is no doubt on that actually because uncertainty in the uh, estimates are appear to be slightly on higher seat then these uh, existing approaches sort of a uh, lookup table or some curves are given and somebody has to use it some models are given but we don't know the coefficient uh, what science goes on and all that they have been they have been based on simulator uh, simulator they have been based on any uh, you know operating experience they have been based on expert elicitation so these are the method of methodology that are, are they are based on non nuclear uh, data also so uh, i think all of us will ag uh, will agree that uh, if we are talking about a specific system like a nuclear plant or my nuclear plant, I am, uh, I am doing the analysis, I think the, uh, the specific aspect should be, uh, should, we should be able to address. And then the qualitative uh, term, of course the handbook approaches, they give you a complex plant, less plant, uh, you know, uh, and the, all the, they give a lot of description. But then for my plant, um, 
in 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 short uh, we should have a method where even the qualitative aspects uh, uh, can be converted into quantitative aspect for example a fuzzy logic so if i get have some imprecise, imprecise input on or you know linguistic inputs uh, are like low very low high and all i should be able to convert it into a quantified estimates so th that kind of science is available there so what it says is human reliability methodology also can be developed and then uh, lim limitations of these approaches were like you know like you know, uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, some of the uh, limitations were some uh, were were okay manageable but some of the uh, uh, limitations they were really hampering the output of our uh, study okay and then um, uh, many of the methods are that are uh, that are available so whatever science has been developed use that one and then uh, take the uh, the whole science ahead uh, to reduce the uncertainty and to uh, to increase the applicability of the any human model into the system at least for selected system it should be uh, uh, applicable so uh, now let us see um, what we are talking about human reality as i mentioned in the beginning uh, since ages when the systems or complex system or especially uh, nuclear plants came into existence there was a factor uh, human factor there and these plants especially the control room the layouts they were designed in a manner that uh, the mis chances of mistakes are uh, less oh, and that that is where ergonomic consideration safety consideration they form uh, the leading principles uh, you know and then um, uh, how you are able to read certain uh, parameter um, and then uh, how we present uh, a transient which floods control room uh, with the input so how operator will enter all these things were known that is number one uh, mostly for control room scenario second uh, the inherent safety features that will provide the uh, if pressure on the downstream reduces a valve will open and it will uh, valve will into the uh, another or alternate source for cooling so these are the things uh, they were there it is these are called inherent safety features they do not require any human intervention only hard hardware itself takes care of this thing so like sometimes even automation also automation can uh, can uh, uh, take care of many things and uh, if we take uh, talk about safety critical system like a nuclear plant then there the, um, the for 30 to 35 minutes the um, operator is not supposed to intervene and now there are advanced systems which are coming in which might give you even uh, 24 hours time where human interactions are not required so this particular subject has been well taken care of and uh, advances going on in terms of inner, inherent safety features you know like passive features so one of the things in design so these are the way they have been uh, uh, they, they are being but as I mentioned there is always a residual component of human either it is uh, in design or it is an operation so uh, um, you know because uh, if let's say if I talk, talk about the passive safety feature then I require certain ma margins uh, to operate those features and it should uh, be able to work in all the spectrum of situation where the plant is operating so those questions uh, requires thermal hydraulic structural analysis and all that and uh, the, the, the systems will it is a matter of time it, they, they will become uh, reality now uh, as far as operations is concerned operations takes care of um, uh, human factor thing by training but training is at the co core of and then qualification and then finally authorization and, and this training comprises of um, there are let us say n number of systems so it could be 20 30 40 whatever for all those system operator has to uh, sit with the expert and answers in a satisfactory manner um, and uh, these questions and get a grading of more than 70 or 80 so that you know uh, he knows the plant in, in generally we, can, we, we should be able to say uh, these trainings are very rigorous they goes on for three to four years and every aspect of plant whether, whether it is site or whether it is a uh, design aspect operational aspect procedures uh, text uh, technical specification all those things a person is trained then after a certain training he is made to take charge into into the uh, plant uh, okay and then sometimes that, uh, there is a this phenomena is uh, sort of you know that you know uh, most of the plants especially for nuclear power plant they have to have simulator so simulator training 
is a way of like uh, handout training, uh, then simulator training wherein uh, like you are standing in plant control room or you are standing in a simulator control room and uh, operating the plant, then you can't distinguish. So you need one more stage close to the plant uh, on a simulator and whatever is not possible in the plant because plant cannot be shut down but say simulator can be operated and it can be tripped, shut down and all. So you can see for yourself what happens in the control room. So it is a very advanced method of uh, training. And then uh, with that, uh, we, we get to the root cause analysis of the program because you know, uh, human factor and once the root cause is understood, we can go for uh, modification also. Uh, like I said, simulator is one of the ad, there is operator support systems, they are, they are being intelligent operator support system, they are being designed for control room uh, purpose. Uh, risk monitors are being designed. If I want to take some uh, component out of service, uh, then I should be knowing what I am doing and what are the increase in risk or there is no impact on risk so that you know I can take up this job. I am uh, I am able to do these things without affecting the available redundancy, diversity and safety margin. You know? So that kind of thing. And if at all anything, anything uh, happens, some um, uh, small residuals uh, increases there, the backup plan should be ready. So risk monitors are having uh, and then uh, uh, reliability based maintenance, risk based maintenance, they have become normal uh, way uh, of life in the uh, safety critical systems. Um, now we'll, uh, we'll review the uh, methodologies on, uh, you know, because as you've said, the residual component has to be taken care of even we, we are doing a lot of improvements in design, operation, maintenance and all. So um, uh, we, we can say this human reliability methods, first categorization is uh, like, you know, first generation method. Uh, they were developed uh, right from 60s to um, early 80s or so and these methods are called first generation method and you will see here many of the methods they are, are first generation method. Uh, we, uh, third that is technique of uh, human uh, error rate prediction, WASH 1400, uh, WASH means Washington DC, uh, 1400 study uh, in nuclear uh, in US. Human, human cognitive sleep in a likelihood index method, uh, accident sequential evaluation program, and then heart cognitive uh, TRC, time reliability correlation, sharp, these are the methods and we will discuss uh, these methods in detail. So they are first, but some of the methods they are uh, in, relatively in uh, around 2000 or before that, so they are called second generation method. Why? Because some of the aspects which were not there in first generation method, they were, they, they were incorporated here. But, uh, uh, but they are for a specific uh, ecosystem or specific task, they were very strong. But uh, uh, even now, uh, many uh, first generation methods are being used very actively like SCR, THERP and all. So uh, they, they are, and they are relevant even today. Not relevant, they are being used, uh, okay. So, but and then the more recent ones like NARA and then uh, CQB that we are developing at BIRC and uh, it has been published in my book also. So uh, these can be called as third generation method because the objective here is to go by uh, first principle methods uh, for uh, human and then uh, form a closed loop, use some intelligent approach to reduce the human error also. So uh, these are the, some features. So these uh, techniques will be reviewed on their uh, special power, uh, the methodology and then what, uh, what, uh, what is their applicability uh, for, from those point of view. So th this is where, what we have here and now um, total 9 techniques as I, uh, uh, are there actually and uh, these techniques uh, I have listed earlier, uh, we will see in the next slide. One by one, we'll have a, just a quick uh, overview of this thing. Uh, these slides will be available to you. You can see in detail. You can uh, uh, refer literature, uh, so that, uh, they, those can be. But the basic thing which we are reviewing here is basic model. What is the model? Whether, whether it is a pre-initiator, post-initiator, you know that initiating events can happen because of some mistakes also. So it is called pre-initiator. Or initiating events can happen because of some latent uh, issues also that means you will not know over a period of time but suddenly some situation happens and the, the uh, and the, uh, the initiating becomes in an event becomes a reality same thing for safety system some uh, when we are modeling the fault tree the human factor uh, is there so pre initiator post initiator post initiator means what kind of actions you are taking um, whether the actions are correct, if the actions are not correct, it will go into uh, further uh, degradation of the plant uh, and then if they are correct, we will be able to recover it. So they are called recovery uh, factor. And each 
human event has got uncertainty uh, though all the methods may not have uncertainty distribution but uh, they, uh, uh, the handbooks of these whatever methods we are using they are generally called handbook approaches you know they have their lookup table they have, they have their situation they will be project you can project and uh, then try to have a cognitive factor various performance shaping factor and you can estimate your own um, uh, for your system the human reliability so let's say the oldest method is uh, therp method uh, which was there in uh, published this book was published in uh, 1983 as i said initially so the mostly it is pre initiator and post it is uh, uh, you know uh, handling pre initiator and post initiator uh, post initiator could be accident sequence top uh, header event also it could be something in the fault tree or uh, you know but mostly it is a uh, uh, this thing and in that uh, thing whether it is a recovery thing or it is some fault has taken pair and human action is uh, is to um, is to uh, take care of that safety aspects so those are there and here judgment and experience has been used to but then you see in 1983 um, the population of nuclear plant was not uh, was not that high or the sensitivity of our this technology was not very high so that means uh, ex experience was also limited now we have uh, down the line almost like uh, uh, third 40 years we have a lot of experience that is available to us so uh, we can have better uh, coefficient methods and of course tools also fuzzy logic artificial intelligence so we can develop a, a new ecosystem for human reliability and then uh, it has got seven performance shaping factors and uh, they can be divided into ex internal external and stress psf uh, now uh, those uh, stress psfs they were all qualitative so uh, now there is a way uh, you can monitor the brain waves and brain wave is an indication of what is the state of the mind uh, if it is uh, alpha uh, lowest then it goes from uh, 2 hertz or 3 hertz uh, to something like you know uh, 42 hertz and all that and that you are able to do in experiments in simulator room and you can measure the stress. Therp there is no doubt it is the most comprehensive approach and uh, if we are talking about the human model today, Tharp has got a human model. It is applicable to the nuclear plant and it was designed to work on PSA. So that way and of course he has, it has got a way to define uncertainty bound uh, other than the median values and all that. So it is a very robust approach in that sense. Um, but then there are limitations that will come to wash 1400. Uh, is a is was done uh, you know the the basic idea was to uh, to categorize the task into rule based knowledge based and you know uh, skill based category because uh, uh, and considering those coefficient which are available in the look uh, lookup table look at the ta task have the old data modify those data and uh, use so but then wash 1400 uh, really backed up its translation into therp actually so uh, so therp uh, came out as a matured step um, Tharp, also, Tharp also was developed in two versions, uh, 1960 or 62 version and then 83 version. Then we have accident sequence evaluation program as the term itself indicate. It is a part of PRA study and we are trying to understand the accident sequences and some of them are human error related. So uh, we want to understand their recovery probability uh, and you know uh, their action failure probability and all those things. So how we can um, uh, improve the quality of PRA. Uh, it was heavily dependent on similar. So, like if you look at the data, uh, expert registration, operating experience, uh, and you know, simulator uh, explanation, and some correlation. These were the source of data uh, that were there, which were sometimes uh, direct, interpreted, qualitative. So, uh, uh, with that, uncertainty levels were a uh, little higher actually. Okay. Now, um, let us see the SLIM, SIM likelihood index method. It directly tells. Um, uh, first the data is uh, uh, expert judgment, uh, uh, sometimes it is called expert, expert elicitation also uh, because there is a systematic procedure for expert elicitation. We do a survey and then obtain the input from the experts and then we try to come to a, uh, uh, some inference, okay, okay this is the value we can use it and all and here success likelihood was one of the uh, thing and mostly this study was, uh, was focusing on post initiator. Okay? So, then human cognitive reliability. Of course, this was also developed along with Tharp or somewhere around SLIM only. But HCR is being used, the, one of the fundamental reason why this uh, uh, methodology is being used is 
uh, because uh, if you look at the control room scenario or even in a nuclear plant or any system scenario, you have a time window available to you to perform a job. And uh, that time window will determine the stress level on the operator. If the time window and the, uh, and the um, time taken for the job uh, is almost sort of overlapping or equal, then you have high stresses. But if the time window is large and you are taking just uh, 0.3 or 0.4 of that thing for performance, so you will do it easily. The stresses are not, uh, so it's called medium, median time. I think we'll, do, we'll show with the calculation how this uh, HCR method is uh, uh, used and uh, applied for various uh, scenarios. Okay. Uh, here also we have performance uh, shipping factor, we have knowledge base, rule base, uh, in, uh, coefficients and all that. Uh, and using those things, uh, we tend to provide, um, uh, here they have action part as well as uh, cognitive part also. So, so that, that way even this approach, I would say, uh, it, it comes, uh, that it backs up the tharp also and sometimes it stands stand alone and it can be used for any uh, PRA study. And then there is an approach called CRIM. Uh, so this was basically part of accident like, like uh, uh, AAC accident sequence evaluation program even the CREAM was also on that thing. Here the emphasis was, was on uh, identifying the major steps, uh, identify the work, different procedural aspect, uh, identify the context of surrounding evaluation uh, uh, and then finally uh, recommended uh, uh, recommendation for reducing the error. So these were the four points. The, this approach was also developed in 1980. So you can see you, uh, the cream on, uh, onwards, they all sort of, 98 onwards will say they should have been fallen into the category of third. But the one question which comes is, what was their utility? How, how often they were utilized? So that, that uh, very difficult to know. Uh, but uh, I would say uh, SCR and third they are the better utilized methods and all. Then we have a sharp systematic human action reliability procedure mainly on the procedural aspects of uh, human reliability because in human reliability suppose if I have accident uh, emergency operating procedure so I have to perform a human reliability study on that procedure and SHARP fits that uh, requirement very well and uh, then you can say uh, which uh, uh, which procedure human reliability is less let's say I'm, uh, I have developed a procedure for loss of coolant accident then I will perform a human reliability analysis for the, this procedure and which are the areas where human reliability is turning out to be poor, we can uh, uh, we can improve those aspects by backup, by uh, redundancy, diversity, and all that. So finally, the the total human reliability uh, in that PSA should be less than a uh, target value. Uh, that kind of thing can be done. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, so this is one of the uh, and but of course it was almost along with the uh, THERP, This methodology had been developed. Then SPAR SPAR H uh, is called. Uh, H stands for human reliability analysis and standard plan analysis. So uh, it has got a psychological component, it has got a diagnosis component, um, okay, and uh, action part. See, uh, we, can, we have both cognitive as well as action part here uh, for this one. And uh, uh, it is because I, I, I could see the background would be because THERP requires a lot of resources. And uh, one has to be really expert in using THERP. But he, this approach, sharp H, is simple and less resource consuming. Probably one more uh, sort of a, uh, one more uh, layer would have been simplified here. Because uh, utilization of a, a particular methodology depends on how simply it can be utilized, you know. And then Athena, it is considered as one of the latest approaches. But uh, uh, the available literature shows that Athena is very, uh, has got a very limited application uh, because uh, we don't get many of the answers which we require. Expert opinion and judgment has been the uh, fundamental input for this uh, procedure, even including expert elicitation. Uh, and this is generally categorized as second generation method. And uh, yeah, it is very difficult to say how well it is utilized. The abbreviation for all these approaches have been given at the bottom of the slide. You can see anytime and just refer it. Now, what are the comments? First comment is, other than THERP, they don't have human model. So we are very sure that we require a human model and that too from the first principle, okay? Because this is an era where in, even for hardware components, um, the emphasis is moving from uh, probability of failure to instant of failure. I am, I am uh, operation uh, uh, ecosystem requires 
is there any degradation for any hardware component and if it is there is a degradation whether I, I have to shut down it immediately or uh, I, I, can, uh, I can operate it for, for some uh, hour, days, weeks uh, and that is a very handy option available. So uh, prognostics and health management and physics of failure approaches. Uh, they are being applied to hardware and I think uh, it's a matter of time that PHM and all uh, and this uh, physics of failure will be applied to uh, because uh, looking at the health condition of the uh, person, uh, we can say whether he is fit for service or he is not fit for service. It is happening directly and indirectly now also but then uh, the plant side there should be a formulation uh, on this kind of thing. And then uh, precursor. If I am seeing at the organization level or at a individual level some precursor phenomena that, that you know indicators uh, and which we have to monitor in advance and say uh, ki, no no there is something incipient. So we will be able to take, take it action, uh, action in a very time bound manner and uh, that event can be avoided. Data and quality. Uh, there is a definite improvement is required and uh, now that improvement uh, does involve reduction of uncertainty, methodology for redu reducing the uncertainty. Then second thing is uh, having, um, uh, having uh, uh, apart from uncertainty characterization, the over a period of, period of time, the median value were, that is changing or you know whether it, so those things. And then consciousness is going, has to be at the uh, source because you know consciousness uh, when we have this principle, we are able to connect easily at the organizational level, at national level and at international level. This is the advantage actually. So, uh, so uh, and of course at individual level, yes, measurement of, in fact, in many countries, uh, the measurement of uh, consciousness or, you know, focus, uh, there are some instrument, of course, we will not go into details. So, that kind of things are also uh, there. Now, systematic rationale. So, if you have to develop a new method, so, Human model should be based on, so we are talking about, about now the purpose CQB means C, C, C and brain, B for brain. So consciousness, cognition and consciousness based, uh, brain based approach uh, for human reliability. That has been developed at, uh, at BARC. Uh, it has been published whatever results uh, in second book also uh, that is uh, risk conscious approach and management. I have given a uh, good uh, treatment to this subject and we are ev evolving but as on today with uh, with the uh, effort of say 10 to 15 days and some working on some PSFs and all that uh, this approach can be uh, used. Now uh, it should be able to reflect on organizational consciousness also. Not only that uh, we talk about the safety culture but then safety culture measurement is got a, is a very subjective phenomenon. So if you have risk conscious culture, probably it will be better because risk, uh, risk has got a mathematical connotation. So it is a measurable thing. Of course, uh, point value, we have to be very careful uh, uh, while using it. But then it, is, it has got a quantitative estimates. And in all the era of life, we, we want quantitative, right from weight to our body parameters to any uh, national international situation, we, want, we believe more, we uh, look, up, look into more into quantitative aspect. So risk conscious culture is more uh, based on more sound principles and then, um, yeah, uh, and if somebody might ask me what is the uh, basis for consciousness. Consciousness, our consciousness, even if I talk uh, about alertness or you know, our my awareness or of my sleep state or awakened state. It is the consciousness in even in simple term. It has got higher meaning uh, for details and all that. So consciousness will form part uh, important or fundamental part of uh, CQB method. And then uh, conscience. Now, if I want to model some security related issue, most of my old approaches they may not work. Some of them they are giving some some sort of scope for that, but not in a fundamental manner or in systematic way. You know. And uh, then uh, we have. Uh, we have uh, in all our old approaches, we have uh, uh, quantification model uh, to characterize control room, to characterize uh, the human. But then uh, if we are doing that, then why not we use the human mental stress level, uh, we take this hardware model that is stress strength theory in structural engineering and see what kind of re resilience my control system is able to provide so that my operator is, is at, at that relative ease and what is his stress level. These two will determine failure probability. So that we'll see in the uh, next slides and all. So what we have discussed in this uh, um, is a review of HRA techniques.
uh, which has given us insight into what should be there in, uh, if we develop a method. Design provisions for reducing errors, we have seen. Operational uh, insights uh, for enhancing the reliability. And then advances in reliability, uh, advances in uh, designing the plants, uh, which are uh, next generation plus passive safety feature and all those things. So they definitely um, will work to reduce the error. But understanding various phenomena there, uh, which um, whether it is thermal hydraulic or structural analysis, so that the uncertainty is less is one of the challenges. Uh, and with that, if you understood, we go for new CQ, CQB approach and uh, that will be the um, next thing that we will be discussing in the third lecture, the THERP uh, approach. Uh, and, and again, THERP details we are discussing because we want to learn uh, in the present context the human reliability te technology for uh, for our job that is risk assessment or for any other purpose um, and second thing is what we can pick up from there uh, strength or weakness so that we can go for CQB method so this is the objective so thank you in this lecture today and uh, now in uh, uh, next lecture we will be discussing the THERP and it is dedicated to te uh, technique for human error rate prediction so thank you. We'll meet in the next lecture, that is third lecture. Thank you.